Charles, man, what's good? What's up, Vlad? What's On the new word? Vlad couch. The new Vlad couch. I see you getting money out here. Hey, you know, a few dollars. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, did you see the Federal Star Keith Murray battle? No, I didn't waste my time watching that. You didn't waste your time watching no, that? No, I didn't waste my time watching that. First of all, Keith Murray is one of the most phenomenal rappers ever. You know yeah. what I mean? To me, you know, I grew up, I remember that hostile verse was so ill. It was 96 degrees in the shade before I catch blood on my blade. Like, he's the first person I ever heard break down the human brain. Like, I, I didn't know anything about no neurosurgeons or none of that. When he was like, um, damage to your medulla. What he said, cerebrum, cerebellum. You got a crew, you better tell. I didn't know what that was. And my homeboy Stuart was like, oh, that's the parts of your brain. I'm like, oh, this guy's the illest rapper ever. Then when I saw the video, he had the razor blade under his mouth. So when everybody came, first of all, I didn't see the, the intrigue between the Keith Murray, Fredro battle. Like I thought Keith Murray would watch Fredro because I never knew Fredro to be an MC. Now if it was Keith Murray, sticky, sticky fingers from Onyx, yeah. that's a battle. Like that's something to be like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I want to be in tune for that, but Keith Murray, Fredro, it never intrigued me. And then when I started hearing the streets and they was like, oh, it was the worst thing ever. Oh, those, both of the guys look washed up, yada, yada. I was like, oh, I don't even want to see it, man. Well, I was there. You was, oh, you was actually there? I was actually there. Oh, you was bored that day? You had nothing else to do? <laughs> well, I wanted to see it. Okay. I'm a hip hop fan. So coming in, you know, I, I was rolling up with my man, my son, and he's like, yo, who do you think going to get it? And I'm like, well, you know, Keith Murray is Keith known Murray. to be more lyrical. Lyrical. But, but the battle started and things, things did not go that way. Yeah, they were saying Keith Murray was drunk or high or so. I don't know what it was. What was he? Well, Keith Murray came here. I want to first and foremost apologize to my family and my fans for not giving a performance that Keith Murray should have. Okay. I took some uh, antihistamines for a head cold and I had a shot of alcohol. By the time I got to that stage, I was not myself at all. I'll be the first to admit it. Yeah, I saw like some viral clip where he had like a dread wig on. Like, why did Keith Murray have a dread wig? Yeah, on? He, he did a little line like a like a KRS One kind of thing, you know. And he put on the dread hat, and it, it didn't go over too well. There's no way Keith Murray supposed to lose the Federal Star ever. And not saying Federal's whack as a rapper. I'm just saying that when it came to like. Lyrics and bars. Sticky was always known as the real lyrical one in that group, and Sticky is a well, is a ly lyrical dude. Yeah, he was there. So Keith Murray versus Sticky would have been intriguing, but I mean, I guess Keith, like you said, Keith Murray defeated himself. Also, a big problem was they're rapping over beats, mm. and that's it, it's hard to even hear what they're saying exactly because you know the beat. You know, you're hearing something brand new over a beat. They're having, you know, they can't do those pauses that the battle rappers do because yeah. they're doing it a cappella. And then what's interesting is that halfway through the battle, they actually cut the beats off and started to go a cappella. And it got a little more interesting, but then it was, there was already kind of the stigma of what happened. Hey, man, I don't think rap is a young man sport. I think that, you know, we're seeing the first generation of rappers who are getting into their 40s. I mean, some of them approaching 50, but as long as they're speaking about what they're going through right now at that age, it's still very viable for them, but it's definitely a uh, age limit on battle rap. There's an age limit on battle rap? Yeah, you can't be a 40 plus year old battle rapper. Why? Because if you listen to how battle rappers disrespect each other and the things that they say, it's only things that young people can get away with, or younger people can get away with. When you're 40 something years old with kids and you're talking about taking a tech nine and blowing out your whole freaking mind and everybody, your whole family gets sprayed in the line. It's like, huh? Well, uh, Fredro did call uh, Keith Murray a dusthead. He uh, said he was broke and, you know, said that, you know, you claimed that you ran up on Tupac or something like that. It, it was, you know, he took some battle rap type shots at him. Yeah, but you know what's so crazy about that? You'd have to be a certain age to even know what he's talking about. Like, of 18 year old, 19 year old kid who watches URL, watches Keith Murray and Fredro, probably don't know what Fredro was talking about. He don't know the rumors of Keith Murray, I guess, being on dust. He, don't, he, he may not know the stories about Keith Murray getting into it with Tupac or getting into it with Prodigy. Like, yeah. he don't know none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, that's for a, a certain age demo that knows those stories. But I don't know, man. I just feel like it's got to be some type of age limit on battle rap. Not rap. 
You can, rap right. for, you can rap for as long as you want, but to be battling in each other's face, spitting on each other with the microphones, hot breath on each other, like, man, go home to your kids, bro. <laughs> I guess there was supposed to be a uh, Bone Crusher, Mike Jones battle at one point. They don't, absolutely don't want to see that. Not intriguing at all. It's not intriguing because neither one of them have been known to be lyricists. Bone Crusher, both of them have made great records. Bone Crusher and Mike Jones have made great records, but battle raps are for lyricists. It's for people with bars. Well, Cassidy did great against Disaster. Most Cassidy people can say rap. most people say Cassidy won. Cassidy can rap. Cassidy is a lyricist. Yeah. Like Cassidy gets busy. Bone Crusher and Mike Jones have nobody's ever sat around and said, "Yo, did you hear what Bone Crusher said? Did you hear what Mike Jones said?" Mike Jones repeated his verse eight times. Yo, it's crazy. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> no, 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 that ain't happening, bro. It ain't happening. All right, we'll, we'll see what happens. Cause uh, Fredro said he wants to battle again. Uh, you know, somebody else. You know, uh, Keith Murray says he wants a rematch. I would love to see a rematch with a sober Keith Murray. A sober Keith Murray. Keith Murray is busy, man. I don't even know if y'all saw Keith Murray when he was on the Breakfast Club earlier this year. Keith Murray spit. Yeah. You know, even though I still think it should be an age limit on battle rap, I do. I would like to see that rematch with both. Rematch with both of them, with with Keith sober, because Keith gets busy. Waka Flocka came on the Breakfast Club, and he said something about he doesn't like the way Caitlyn Jenner is being pushed in the media. He said it's the devil's work thinks it's evil, and uh, he got a lot of backlash over it. He came back and addressed it, but he didn't really apologize. He just said, this is how I feel. He, said, he didn't apologize for using the word evil, but he still stood behind what he said. Mm-hmm. But what was your take when, when he was on The Breakfast Club and saying that? I'm, I'm all for a person speaking exactly what's on their mind. I'm all for a person expressing their honest opinion. And I mean, that's the way he felt about transgenders. And I mean, yo, he's not saying nothing that other people haven't said, and he's not saying anything that other people haven't thought. So a lot of people that don't like, you know, the transgender agenda, you know. Transgender they, agenda. Yeah. There's a lot of people who don't like it. <laughs> so I've never heard to say mean? it like that. That's transgender agenda. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm the type of person, I don't, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a equal opportunity person for everybody. Like the only thing I care about is good and evil, right and wrong. God and Satan, that's it. Like, it's real simple with me. Okay. I, don't, I don't judge people because of their black, because of their race. I don't judge people because of their gender, their sexuality. But I'll be the first to admit, the transgender lifestyle does confuse me a little bit. Like, that's not a, a knock against them. And see, the thing I don't like is, whenever somebody says something like that, instead of somebody from the transgender community stepping up and having the conversation, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and maybe just allowing me to understand, because I would like to understand. I would like to ask the question like, yo, why exactly do you feel like you identify as a woman? Or why would you ever want to be a woman or a woman? Why would you ever want to be a man? I have the right to ask those questions. And you don't have to get mad just because I ask those questions. And just because I ask those questions don't mean I'm transphobic. I'm just simply asking a question. Like, I get it. I can understand why somebody is gay. Like, if somebody tells me, yo, they were born gay, they're into men, I, I have no choice but to believe them. But here's, here's my, uh, my take on this. For everyone that says, I support the gay community, I support the trans community, I'm, I'm all for it. If you turn around and say, okay, do you hope that your, your child becomes trans? Most people will say no. So if you really support it, you should be okay with your, with your child being trans or gay. Not necessarily. No? Yeah. Why? Because... Cause you you can you can support something. That, I don't even know if the word is support that they're using. I think that the word they say is, I think what they really want to say is that's them. That's cool. I'm not against it. Okay. Well, what about like you know at one point interracial marriage was illegal. Okay. So for you to say, well, I'm okay with that, but I've never let my daughter marry a black guy. Like, okay, no, fuck that. But I'm I'm okay with that. It's it's sort of still racist, don't not, you think? No. No. Not at all. Because for me. Like, I want my daughter to marry whoever she's in love with. But if I was one of those people who said, yo, I want my... Like, Asian people do it all the time. Chinese people, they want their daughters to marry Chinese. That don't mean that they're racist. It doesn't? They just want to keep their bloodline pure. That, 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 that don't mean... That don't mean you racist. Keeping your bloodline pure? You ever bred dogs? 
No, I have a bread dog. Okay, well, you I, breed I, have dog. A, I have a Rottweiler, though. Okay, so. But you know, if you breed dogs, if you got pit bulls, you're not going to let your pit bull just breed with any old kind of dog. Yeah, these are you animals. may lock but Rottweilers. These, these, are not, these are not humans. Why not? But it's the same thing. You want to keep, you would like to keep your blood. If I'm a father, you want to keep your... I, I don't think you can compare a dog and a human in the same breath and really have a, I don't a, see the a regular conversation about that. I don't think that makes you racist just because you have a preference. So, so when the Nazis wanted to get rid of all the Jews because they felt that they were inferior and they, they don't want to fuck up the bloodline. Listen to what you just said, Vlad. You said they felt that they were inferior. Just because I don't want my daughter, just because I have a preference, I say, yo, why don't you go find you a nice black man to bring home? Somebody I can relate to. That's just being self-serving and having a preference. That's not saying don't marry a black man because they're inferior. Or you're white, you shouldn't marry a, 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 a black woman because, I mean, a black woman because she's inferior. Like that's the, that's the, wor- that's the big difference. And just having a preference and saying, if you're if I'm an Italian dad, these uh, these guys got pride. Well, bring a nice Italian home, baby. Yeah. You know, that's not racist. It's just uh, you want your daughter to bring something home that you can relate to. But what you gotta understand is, you ain't the one marrying this person. Right. You're not the one dating this person. You're not the one growing to love this person, dad or mom. So get out the way and let your daughter or son love who they love. Imagine you're a black family. Yes. Who doesn't really interact with white people like that? Right. And then the, the black girl brings a white guy home. Yeah. It's not even a racist thing. It's just a, I don't deal with white people thing. It's un- I, I go from not having to deal with them at all to you. Guess who's coming to dinner? Now you want me just to sit at the table and eat and talk? Like I don't have nothing in common with this dude. But but the, but the interesting thing is, is that we talk about black families. They're actually the most like embracing, open people that I've, I've ever like, dealt with. We've, yeah. we've always been like that. Yeah, whenever, like, whenever I, you know, girls that I've been involved with have brought me home to their, their black family, they're like, hey, come on in. Like, yeah. th- there was no feeling of uncomfortableness or, or anything else like that. I mean, we've been like that to the, since the beginning of time, almost to the detriment of us. I mean, you look at what happened to Charles II Carolina, the man you and me. They just let Dylan Roof come on into the church. He's never been there before. They prayed with him and yeah. kicked it with him. He even said he thought about not killing them because they were so nice. They were so nice. You know? Black man walk to a white church. Everybody on arms. Uh, they up and all like, "Oh, what's up?" Watch that guy. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you, you don't belong here. Like, what are you doing here, sir? Like, what's going on? And that, and it might not even be on no racist stuff. Just like you look foreign. Yeah. What are you here for? Yeah, like, we've never seen you before. Yeah, where is the shooter? The the South Carolina shooter. He was embraced by the black people. In that Absolutely. Church. Yeah, it's fucking sad, yo. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't think I don't just because, you know, you may you don't have anything against transgenders. No, nah, I wouldn't want my son. I wouldn't want my son to be that. Or my daughter. First of all, it's complicated. It's too complicated. Like they bring a lot of drama into their life, and it's not their fault. It's just that if you're born one way, but you feel you were supposed to be something else, yeah. To make that leap and say I am a man who identifies as a woman, just to come out and say that is like, whoa. Yeah. Like that ain't that that's that's nothing that that's not that's that's not nothing easy to do. So I wouldn't want my daughter or son to have to go through that. And, and on top of that, unless you are Bruce Jenner, who has millions of dollars and can do whatever he wants, what I have found is the the transgenders that I have come in contact with, that I've spoken to and so forth, or you know I know people that know them and so forth, uh, they end up having to be prostitutes you know, porn stars, whatever Why? else, because they they find it harder to integrate into society. You see what I'm saying? Because when you're a transgender and you're over the top and, you know, and, and so forth, and it's hard for, you know, it's definitely harder to find a regular job. Okay. I don't even know if all that is true, but with all that you just said, so why would I want my child to be that? Yeah. Even if I have nothing against them, why would I want my child to be that? Like, yo, listen, it confuses me. Like, whenever I try to wrap my head around the whole transgender thing, it's because, like I said, if, a, if somebody comes to me and they says, I, I'm, I was born gay, I, I, I got to believe you. The reason I got to believe you is because you're telling me this. But if you come to me as a man and tell me you were born as a woman, I'm like, I, you got a dick. <laughs> like, like that's, it's two totally different trains of thought to totally different levels of thinking. Yes, I can wrap my mind around somebody being homosexual. The transgender thing, I really, I'm like, eh, you know, but I don't knock them for what they into. But I can honestly admit it's confusing. And there is nothing wrong with me saying that. That don't make me transphobic or nothing. I just simply don't understand. But we live in a society now where they're like, don't try to understand it, just accept it. 
who thinks like that? Who does that with anything? I don't do that with anything in my life. Anything that I accept, I try to understand. There was an interesting conversation I had with Lord Jamar uh, a couple days ago where, remember the song Punks Jump Up to Get Beat Down? Mm -hmm. uh, Sadat X had a line where he said, I can freak, flock, flow, fuck up a faggot, don't understand the ways, and I ain't down with gays. And like, <laughs> There was, uh, you know, some backlash. I'm glad, you know, yeah, like you sent think? letters to the, to the record <laughs> label and so forth. So they, they had a clean radio version. This is the clean version, right? right? But on your version, you actually talk about murdering somebody. And that seems to be okay. Exactly. Exactly. On the clean version, danced all night and at the end caught a body. Oh, that's a murder. Like, oh, yeah. He killed somebody at the end. Caught oh, a body. As long Caught. as you're not talking about gays, oh cool, we out of here. Catch all the bodies you want, but you see? Good one, Vlad. Good one, Vlad. You even caught that right there. Good one. Murder is okay. Murder's okay, but just don't talk about. Don't say faggot though. Don't say faggot. Don't talk about. But murder is okay. Punching us. Don't talk about shaming us or any kind of negativity towards us. But murder, especially of the black man, is perfectly fine. But I mean, that's what I told Flocka. I mean, when Flocka said the thing about evil, and then we start talking about it, I thought, well, Flocka, people can say the same thing about lyrics that you said. You know what I mean? If you on a record, listen, if you're a transgender and you choose to, if you're a man and you say, yo, I want to identify as a woman, you ain't hurting nobody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you cut your own penis off, you may be hurting yourself, but you ain't hurting no, you ain't hurting nobody. Right. But if you're a guy who's saying, yo, I'm going to kill you, sell drugs. I'm going to sell drugs, like that's way more evil than the quote unquote transgender lifestyle, you know? Yeah, I mean, Waka Flocka came out with Oh, Let's Do It, which is about selling drugs. I, mean, I, I fucked my money up. Now I can't, yeah. can't re-up. Like, he's talking about selling drugs. But see, the thing about Waka is that you got to understand that was, what? Five six years ago, yeah, he's he's a, to me he's a totally different person. He's Absolutely. definitely evolved. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? He's definitely growing. Yeah, shout out to Flocka, that's my man. Into a new individual. So, all I'm saying is you can't we you can't, die without sin. Can can oh, if you if you if you have no sin, then you can judge. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We all sin. Like for for everything you you can say, homosexuals is this uh, evil sinning lifestyle. Transgenders, oh, they're not happy with what God gave them. They're sinning like. We all sin in some way, shape, or form. And I'm not even saying what they're doing is a sin. Even the Pope. I don't know about the Pope. You know what I mean? I don't know what the Pope does in this spare time. You talk about the Pope that was fucking the little boys? Some of those Popes? No. No, that's not, that's not the Pope. There's only one Pope. Oh, I thought it was, it's been plenty of Popes throughout time. But, no, no, but there's one Pope at a time. Oh, yeah, I don't know what the Pope does. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, I don't know either. But I'm just saying, I don't think he's totally pure. Yeah, nobody's totally <laughs> pure. All I'm saying is, like, I can't judge nobody for what they do. You know, and like, like I said, the transgenders, they're not hurting nobody. If anybody, if they're they hurting anybody, they're hurting themselves because they got to deal with all the drama. Like I got to say, and my saying is, yo, those who create their own drama got to deal with their own karma. They create their own drama because they're the ones who are taking that step to say, I'm not this, I'm this. So whatever comes their way from doing that, they got to deal with. And I don't like to add on to that because I don't got no problem with, with what they do. It ain't my business. Young Thug recently uh, did an article, did an interview in a, in a magazine where he said that 90% of his uh, clothes are women's clothes. Everyone was in uproar over this. Not to me. He admitted he cross-dresses. We knew that already. We see him. Cross-dresser. We see him. Like, we see him every day. We see him. We've seen him in the skirts. We've seen him in the tights. Like, yeah. we've seen it. The little girl dresses and... All that type of stuff. He's a cross. He's he's all he said was I cross dress ninety percent of the time. Yes. Or maybe all of the time because even if you throw a little article of clothing from a man on it, but you still got on some woman's clothing, it's still a girl. Still clothing. cross dressing. He cross dresses. That's it. As simple as that. He's he's uh well I guess, I mean he's he's a hip hop cross-dresser. He's, he's, he's a hip hop cross-dresser. He's not doing, he's really not doing anything we haven't seen before. Like I've seen, you've seen rock artists, rock artists have worn female clothes. Like all little skinny ass rock artists, they, they, they used to wear female clothes. Prince, you know Yeah, what I mean? Prince, would you say that Prince is a cross-dresser? 
If you wear female clothes, you're a cross-dresser. So does Prince wear female clothes? At, at one point in time, it seemed like he was. I don't know if he, I don't know if they were actually female clothes. I mean, remember he had they the pants were styled. With the, pants with the butt cheeks out. Pants with the ass out. But, but is that female? <laughs> Because even don't females know. don't be wearing that shit. I don't know what that was. I mean, but yo, you look at, like, I've seen CeeLo Green has put on a wedding dress. You know, Dennis Rodman wore a wedding dress. Like, I, I can't, Dennis Rodman has basketball, but we've seen that in hip hop before. You know? To the extent of Young Thug? CeeLo had on a wedding dress. What was the whole wedding dress thing about? <laughs> I, remember, I think it was something to do with Niles Barkley. <laughs> CeeLo wore a wedding dress with the veil and everything. Like, you know, like, and yo, man, even with comedians, we, they, how many, how much times have we heard people? Oh, wow. How, how did I miss this? How many times have we heard people say, you know, um, comedians wear the dress? You know, like, oh, I can't, we always, always making black comedians wear the dress. Like, so he ain't the first guy we've seen in entertainment with a dress on. It's a little bit different, I think, to wear a dress in a movie for a role as opposed to, you're just wearing, you're just cross-dressing all the time just because that's just how you like to dress. I mean, you know, because because ultimately you are an actor. You are, you are not, you're not being yourself in this movie. You are playing this other person with this other mentality and so forth. You know, when you watch a great actor, you know, you forget, you know, like, like for example, my favorite actor of this generation is Daniel Day-Lewis. When I when I watched Lincoln, I, I totally forgot that that was Daniel Day Lewis. I'm like, wow, this is Lincoln. Well, Young Thug is acting too. Is he? He wasn't born Young Thug. You know what I'm saying? Young Thug is a character that developed over time. So I think you know right now he's probably getting some money and you know he's he's realizing a lot of the entertainment value that goes in stirring up waters to catch fish. Do you think Young Thug is gay? No, I think he's a crossdresser. Okay. I think he's a cross-dresser, and I think he's part of the new generation of men who have been grown up under the feminization of society. Like, that's just what they've done. Like, it's a lot of men who didn't have fathers in the house, and, you know, they, they just have kind of demasculated men in a way. But just because, but then the other, other side of the coin is, yo, he may be one of those guys that dresses that way, but still may be very much a man. We don't know. I don't know the dude. You know, or maybe it's just the character. I just know that the character of Young Thug, from what I know, is a crossdresser. We've interviewed him and his fiance. I called a mutual friend, and I was like, I really like him, da da da, and we linked up. No, 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 no. And then, like two weeks after that, him and my 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 play brother were doing music together. They're cool. And I walked in okay. the house, and I was just in the house, hair all over my head, chilling. And he was there. And my mom was like, when I walk in the door, she like, thug in here. Yeah, and right after that, he like walked up on me and he was just like, yeah. I want to be with you. I actually was like, okay. I, I could see them as a couple. Like I, I saw the interaction, people were like, oh no, it looks fake. And it's like, nah, I, I've been around enough couples to see what a couple's like. They, they actually seem like they really together. And if Young Thug is bisexual, then she's cool with it. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. I think I really think that he does a lot of things for entertainment value. Right, because he calls his man Bay. Bay, hubby. He know, yo, he know what he doing, man. Yeah. Young, when Young Thug tweets out, yo, when we roll blunts the size of penises, like. Yeah, we smoking penises here. We smoking penises. Like, he, know, he, he, he got to know yeah. what he's doing. He got to know. But like I always say, if he's not gay, he just need to be, because he'd be through the roof. I've been said How many times have I sat on this couch? So if Young Thug basically said, Fuck this shit, I'm gay. What's up, y'all? Embrace me. He'd probably get embraced. Absolutely. First of all, people already fuck with his music. They already fuck with him. So I think we live in a society where nobody really gives a shit anymore. And like I always said, I said, yo, if you're going to be a gay rapper, you got to be a gay rapper who is hood as a motherfucker. You can't be no flamboyant, you know, femme gay. You got to be, be a hardcore goon gangster. So cross-dressing ain't femme? Not if you got a fucking pistol under your skirt. <laughs> you got a motherfucking loaded pistol under your skirt and you 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 down to pull that motherfucker and start lighting up the room at any moment. No. Yeah, leave that guy with the dress alone. Nor it up. <laughs> leave that motherfucker alone. Dress, yeah, you may get. Remember when Biggie said, what's under that skirt? And nigga, nigga look at you and be like, what's under that skirt? And nigga, yeah, you don't want to find out. Fucking flip that skirt up and flash a motherfucking nine at your ass. 
40. Slim Jesus. Have you seen uh, the video? I have seen the video. Drill time? Yeah. Have you seen the Vlad TV interview? I did see the Vlad TV interview. That shit's dope. If I if I rapped about driving around in a fucking car and like fucking listening to country music, nobody would give a fuck about that shit. Like, I make music about some shit because it sounds cool. Like, I like making music. I make cool music. I'm going to tell you, out of all the interviews that we've ever done since 2008, that interview got more views in a short period of time than any interview I've ever done, including you. With, with, with all your, your fan base and your TV shows and your top rated radio show and your syndication, Slim Jesus has gotten three million views. Because it was about few, timing. In a couple weeks. It was, and it's, it's about to be our biggest interview ever. It's right there. The, I think the only interview I have that has more views right now is Nicki Minaj, and he's about to over, you know, surpass that. And about, that was six years ago. It's about timing. It's not that, it's not because he's hot. It's not because he's hot in the streets, he's fucking with Slim Jesus. It's that we saw this video, and you know, the video had the, the warning in the beginning that none of this is real, which I thought was dope. Because why incriminate yourself if you don't fucking have to? Like, a lot of you stupid motherfucking rappers can learn a lot from Slim Jesus. Like, you don't have to act like this shit is real. Like, shit don't have to be real. I don't know if y'all know this or not. Being real in rap don't pay the bills no more. Okay? That shit ain't never really paid the bills. Like, right. there's a difference between being real and authentic and being criminal. Yeah. Okay, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Wale, those guys are real. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then there's a lot of other rappers that are just out here doing criminal shit. All you motherfuckers right. I see on World Star with your guns and you're beating up people right. and you got your drugs on the table, that's just criminal. Right. So for example, Beanie Siegel is criminal. Yeah, but Beanie Siegel is authentic. That's really him. Yeah, he's authentic, but, but he's also criminal. And when you look at Beanie Siegel's career, I feel that he has not gotten to the potential where he should have gotten because of the criminal side. But Beanie, Beanie's not a good example because Beanie ain't out here really perpetrating that. Like Beanie's not on camera with a whole bunch of guns and a bunch of drugs on the table. Fair enough. Like I'm the realest motherfucker out. We just know Beanie is criminal because he's a real motherfucker who does who gets into trouble a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not out there portraying that image, portraying that lifestyle. See murder. C. Murder wasn't out there portraying it either. His name was C. Murder. Well, but, but, okay, but. I'm talking just, about just, just because Just because they're not in the videos pulling out guns, their lyrics and the content and stuff like that are still do, talking about. To me, to me, to me, honestly, that's, that's kind of fine. And the reason I say it's kind of fine because you still don't know if it's entertainment or not. You just know that it's a dope ass rap. I'm talking about these motherfuckers who claim to be rappers, but get on Instagram. And all they showcase is guns. I can't even name, I don't even know their names because you see them on Worldstar all the time. They show all their motherfucking guns, they show all their motherfucking drugs and shit, and they proclaim to be this image that they're not. But I, I, when Slim Jesus did that, I thought it was dope. Because it's like, why incriminate yourself if you don't fucking have to? And then when he sat down, he did the interview with you, he was like, that ain't me. That's not who I am at all. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And guess what? If he puts out another record, people are going to fuck with it. You know why they're going to fuck with it? Because they see this white boy doing drill music. It's the novelty of it. He don't have to do anything criminal. It's not about him doing anything criminal, him being some thug, some gangster. It's a fun, the name is hilarious. Slim Jesus. And this white boy doing drill music. It's just fucking funny. And it's a novelty. I don't think that shit, I mean, personally, I don't think it's going nowhere. You know? What do you mean it's going? You don't think it's going anywhere? Nah, you, I don't you think, think. You think a couple months from now people will forget about Slim Jesus? It'll be like a. They already forgot about him now. Like a meme, like a funny meme that you saw a couple months ago. They forgot about him now. He came out with that record. Everybody, you know, was like, oh shit, it was funny. You know what I mean? Like, look at this, look at this, look at this. And a few days later, you got him for an interview. You watched it. He's like, oh, that ain't really who I am. And it's over. Now, he could have kept it going by coming on the interview with you and be like, I'm the realest motherfucker out here. I wish a motherfucker would try me. I shoot shit up. I kill motherfuckers, dog. You know what I mean? The only reason I put that motherfucking warning in the front of the video is because I didn't want, I wanted, I didn't want to scare the police. I didn't want the police on me, but I kill all you motherfuckers, man. <laughs> he did that, motherfucker would be like, whoa. That would have kept the heat going. But once you say, this ain't really who I am, it's like, all right, cool. He's just about the music. Now, boom, let's go. Okay. On to the next. You do realize that this is the first rapper in hip-hop history that has come out from the very beginning and said, all oh, this is made up. There's people that have been exposed. There's people that have come in and gotten in trouble and try to backtrack this, that, and the third. 
you know, even the clips, like at one point when like, I think like their manager got busted for drugs and stuff like that, I remember did a video saying like, we're not really doing this. Here's my regular car, <laughs> stock rims. Like, you know, they didn't want to go to jail right along with their, you know, with their people. You see this every so often, but you've never seen someone come out from jump and say, all this is made up. All this that you're hearing is all fake. I'm making it all up. I'm a fan of the stuff, but it's not really me. This is all fantasy. I, I applaud people for being real. I applaud people for being honest. I applaud people for being authentic. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Like, I think that's dope. Like, it's good. Like, why bring unnecessary heat on yourself for no fucking reason? The, the only time I could really compare this to is, like, do you remember, like, the, the Grave Diggers and there was, like, this, like, horrorcore rap at one point mm -hmm. that was kind of popular. I think Russell Simmons, like, signed one of these dudes at one point. And, Russell you know, Simmons signed the Flatliners. I flatliners, believe. there we go. Yeah, the Flatliners, who, who didn't do too well. But it was, like, the gimmicky thing. It was like, okay, we rappers, but we talking about how we're fucking the Grim Reaper. And, you know, mm -hmm. they changed their names, you know, and it's, like, all this, like, death rap and, and stuff like that. You know, you know, and, of course, you have, like, ICP, you know, Insane Clown Posse, who talk all this crazy shit and, and stuff like that, but you know, but they wear a clown mask, so it kind of offsets it. But in general, hip hop is supposed to be real. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Hip hop has not been real in forever. You know when hip hop stopped being real, when motherfuckers started um, getting paid to glorify the gang culture, to glorify the drug culture, to glorify violence. Yeah. That's because, when hip hop stopped because, being uh, real. Because Ice Cube was never gang banging. But that was the hardest. You couldn't tell me that when I first listened to him. But I never looked. I saw the I saw the interview you did with Scarface. I never looked at Ice Cube as a gangbanger though. I mean, I got some ties to Los Angeles. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of know who's active and who's not active. Yeah. You know who was active and who wasn't active. And 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 like, you know, in, in Cube's defense, man. Cube was a genius. I never heard him. I never heard Cube play him a sec. Like, Cube to me was a narrator of the hood. He was a storyteller. Like, he was the guy that was taking us behind the scenes of the hood. If you've never been to the ghetto, if you've never been to the hood, if you didn't know what was going on in L.A., he was like a news reporter or such. Like, I never, I never ever looked at Cube and thought Cube was that violent, rough motherfucker. Like, he never gave off that image to me. Like, okay. Well, to me, when I was in high school, I'm a little bit older than you, but like in high school, when I first heard the NWA album and everything else like that, motherfuckers I slaughtered. You know, with a crime record like Charles Manson, like I really thought he was out there beating motherfuckers up, shooting motherfuckers. Like, I never thought that. I just yeah. thought, I thought he was just a great storyteller. Like, I mean, when I listen to something like, today was a good day. Like, even when he said, I didn't even have to use my AK. Yeah. I guess the day was a good day. I mean, when I heard that, it never made me feel a way, because I'm like, yo, how many of us really use our gun? Yeah. You ride around with it all the motherfucking time, but how many How many times have you really had to bust it? The gun range. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, Cube, you had a good day. You had your AK, you was, you was prepared in case some shit went down, but you didn't have to use it. Are you straight out of Compton, a crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube, from the stupid dope gang with an attitude? Like, I never thought crazy motherfucker to me don't mean I'm killing all you motherfuckers. He's just like, you just uh, could be a loony guy, a crazy guy. I never looked Crime at record like Charles Manson, AK-47 is a tool. Don't make me act a motherfucking fool. Don't me. Me and you, me and you can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, no maybe. I'm knocking out the box daily. But none of that is saying he's actually doing it. Like, none of, no, nothing you said just make... He, uh, I agree to disagree. None of it says he actually I does it. agree to disagree. It. He said me and you could go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Don't make uh, me. Uh, I listen to words, man. Like, I never thought. I listen uh, to words. Whatever. Well, I mean, it is what it is. You know, but at the end of the day, Ice Cube's an incredible rapper. And, uh, but it was it surprised me a little bit. Like, for example, I interviewed uh, Alonzo from World Class Wrecking Crew. Ice Cube was a great kid. Just a nice kid. So Ice Cube wasn't gangbanging at all. No. No. Was it was it a little weird hearing about all this gang banging stuff from someone that doesn't gang bang at all? Fuck me up. Yeah. It fuck the fuck who? Who? I'm like, you like, got to be bullshit. Like, so I was like gangster, gangster. Like I thought Ice Cube was the most gangster motherfucker on the planet. You know what? I thought gang, Ice Cube come in here and kill everybody. You know, you know what? what I mean? <laughs> He's a great actor. <laughs>
You know, he, he actually talked about that on The Breakfast Club, though, because I said to him, I asked him, I said, yo, I was watching the movie, man, and, you know, from what I got from the movie was, you know, you were in the hood, but you weren't necessarily active. Yeah. Like, you weren't out here doing a lot of, you know, criminal stuff. And he goes, man, I get so sick of that. He goes, yo, just, he, he said, what, what, is, what is being hood to you? What is being real to you? Yeah. And he goes, getting in trouble, right? Like, you know, selling drugs, busting your gun. He was like, man, that's criminal. He said, you can be from the hood and not be criminal. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. It's absolutely true. You can grow up in the ghetto, grow up in the motherfucking hood, right. just like the next man, and not ever partake in any criminal activity. But right. that don't mean you're not from the hood. Right, but all your lyrics are about criminal activity. Your lyrics are, are painting a picture. It's storytelling. Yeah. Hey, man, shout out to Ice Cube. I mean, we see it all the time. Like, Shout out to Ice Cube. A lot, it's a lot of great narrators in hip-hop. It's a lot of great storytellers in hip-hop. 